Hey everyone, I'm Mayor Betsy Price and welcome to It's Your Fort Worth. Today we're going to talk about a topic that's very important to me, compassion. As children, many of us were taught to remember the golden rule, to treat others as we want to be treated. Whether it was at school, in a religious service, or maybe around your dining table. As kids, we heard that theme time and time again. As adults, how often do we practice the golden rule? Not enough. When politics, religion, values, and beliefs clash, it can be hard to recall, let alone practice, this major code of respect. This happens across the globe, throughout our nation, and sadly, it happens here in our own dear Fort Worth. That's why this past August, City Council and I voted unanimously for a resolution affirming Fort Worth's support for the International Charter for Compassion. With this vote, Fort Worth joins a worldwide network of compassionate communities who share a common purpose to restore compassionate thinking and action in every facet of religious, moral, and political life. In order to carry out this mission, we established a stewardship group. This group will promote and create a shared vision of enhancing positive civic engagement in our city and focusing on the three pillars of unity, volunteerism, and abundance. As the holiday season approaches, a time of reflection, thankfulness, and giving, I can't think of a better opportunity to reflect on and discuss our city's commitment to compassion and to this outstanding charter. With that in mind, I've asked the Compassionate Fort Worth Stewardship Group to join me for a discussion here at the beautiful City Life Center of Fort Worth. First, we have Rabbi Andrew Bloom of Congregation of Av Shalom. Welcome, Rabbi. Thank you for having me. Glad to have you. Also joining us is Tim Woody, lead pastor at City Life Church. Thank you for sharing your facilities, yes, Tim. Thank you for being here. And Charles Robinson's joined us today, the associate pastor at Meadowbrook United Methodist. Charles, thank you for coming and joining us today. It's a pleasure, thank you. Charles, Tim, and Andrew, we really do appreciate your hard work on this Compassionate Charter. I thought we would just go through a few questions about what we're doing and why we're doing it. Rabbi, I thought I'd start with you to kick off the conversation. We keep throwing around the word compassion, and as a faith leader, what does compassion mean to you, or what, is compa what do compassionate acts mean to you? Compassion for me comes straight from the book of Genesis of the Torah of the Bible, where it says that each person is created in God's image. Unfortunately, in today's society, we only look at our image or what other people's image like us is. I think compassion is seeing that light within each person and then meeting them and helping them wherever they are. It's interesting, each and every one of us knows the great story of Noah's Ark and the turbulence. We live in a time of turbulence and the ark of today, which we in our group hope to, and I know you in the city hope to enhance, the ark equals acts of random kindness. And I think for Compassion of Fort Worth under your leadership, we are not only building the ark through acts of uh, random kindness, but through all acts of kindness, helping the city grow and become more in the light of God, in the light of each person, no matter what their belief is or who they are. Do you see the need in a community like Fort Worth to for more compassion and more compassionate acts? You know, coming from the East Coast, uh, I've been blessed to come here and I see what a compassionate city Fort Worth is. It's really a large city that feels like a small city and thereby people support each other, both on the communal, individual and family uh, basis. And I think what we're trying to do with, under your leadership is expand that. There is definitely a need, always a need for more compassion. But I think the base of this community and this city is so high, thereby we can succeed as a diving board to the next stage. And I, I'm really uh, appreciative and I thank you very much for asking me to serve well, on this great Well, thank you for your, your hard work on it. And you know, that's a challenge for us in a high growth city is how do we maintain that small town feel and with that small town feel comes more compassionate acts because people are more connected to each other. So Tim, in your congregation, do you also see instant instances within the city where people can exercise simple, random kindness and compassionate acts? Absolutely, there, there are needs all around us. Um, Fort Worth is already a compassionate city. We just want to see that even taken to the next level. So, so 
our people and the people that I interact with, they are always looking for, we're always looking for another opportunity. And one of the, one of the great things behind the, the Charter for Compassion and the Compassionate Fort Worth new agenda that we have here is, is to unite those people, to unite the people that, that want to uh, display compassion and pull others along with us. Because as we do that, we can show that we are really a city of abundance and, and we're a city where we can come together and volunteer and make this a better place to live and do business and, and to, to worship and in, in every area, we want the city to be better. But it really goes back to helping people who are less fortunate than ourselves. And that's where compassion comes from. Can you give us some specific ideas how we might accomplish that? Well, absolutely. Uh, in fact, one of the things that, that we are going to be doing as a as Compassionate Fort Worth is we are, we are looking to, uh, to recruit hundreds really of volunteers to help simply help people with their taxes to to help them from uh, to, to get the refunds that they need that there are there are needy people in our city whose family income is around sixteen thousand dollars a year and we can come alongside and we can help and we can be generous with our time and help them to move to the next level for themselves and to give training and support and and encouragement and and sure it's the it's the random acts here and there that we should all be doing every day uh, but they're also what I would like to call targeted acts of kindness and that is that's where we look for opportunities to pull our resources together and the best resource we have is people people and so we come together with people and we can accomplish great things I agree I think it, the kids always say pay it forward yes and sharing your knowledge with other people particularly as you mentioned the tax field would be great a family making 1600 you know 16,000 Maybe they have a refund, four or five hundred dollars coming in. It cost them a hundred dollars to get that refund yes. done. That's and there are groups helping do that, but this will be a great example. We appreciate your support on it. Charles, can you tell me a little bit about why you chose in the Meadowbrook area to get involved with us at the Compassionate City? You started out with my faith-based group. I and did. I really appreciated that. I did. I appreciate the invitation. Uh, I, I think that uh, through that invitation. Uh, I was able to uh, uh, experience uh, the Compassionate Cities movement uh, by working with uh, Rabbi Bloom and Pastor Tim uh, and some others like Melinda Veach uh, and uh, Jack Ernest as well uh, and, and Father Hasso. Uh, and, and, and in that experience, you know, I saw the compassion, just the group meeting, there was a compassion uh, that sat around that table that I wanted to be a part of. and so. Uh, of course, uh, being a, a Christian, uh, compassion is all throughout the New Testament and throughout the Bible. Uh, as a matter of fact, Jesus uh, talked about uh, having a, a group of people follow him and he's, he was filled with compassion, it says. And so that's one of uh, the scriptures that, that motivates me uh, in trying to be a disciple of Christ is to, to be filled with compassion uh, like Jesus for uh, people of all faiths, all religions, all colors, all ethnicities, so. And you pastor in an older part of Fort Worth where oftentimes there's great need. And it's a great opportunity to bring other parts of the city in to see what we have going on in all of Fort Worth. How do you see this group helping expand the efforts in, in these older re-emerging areas of the city that need help? Well, it's great you asked ask that. About a month ago, we experienced uh, uh, one of our initial launchings of, of the Compassionate Fort Worth movement uh, in Stop 6 uh, where we gathered uh, uh, from all parts of the city in Stop 6 right right down the street from Dunbar High School and, and we picked up trash throughout Stop 6 uh, and, and so just seeing the people uh, there unite on that front uh, I, I think uh, sparked uh, this movement even more and, and we want to take this movement throughout all parts of Fort Worth uh, where there are uh, those who are impoverished and uh, many who are dehumanized and degraded and forgotten and outcast in communities and we want to show them that hey there's compassion and there's love for you too. And there's less hate and less consequently less violence when people reach out and touch each other. I truly believe the more tolerant the community the less violent it is and the police you know do a better great job because they don't have to fight Amen. other things for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How would you say a more tolerant United Fort Worth might really look in 10 years? <laughs> that, that's a, a, a difficult que question because there's 
tension between the two terms themselves, between tolerance and uh, unity. Uh, for for someone who has a high to uh, high tolerance and someone who has a low tolerance, there's uh, just obvious and explicit tension between uh, you know those two persons. But we're hoping that uh, that in our disagreements and in our um, in our fellowship that, that we can find a middle ground uh, and, and find a, a place where we can be tolerant uh, and, and compromise to be tolerant with each other. Uh, stand, stand on a place where we can say, hey, you need this, I want this, let's find a place where we can meet each other's needs. And the needs of the community uh, are more important than your needs individually and my needs individually. And so if we can find that middle ground. And I think in that we find unity. For example, uh, the Glen Gardens situation with the uh, whiskey distillery being built there and, and the, the council uh, voting uh, uh, for that to be built there. Many in the community, uh, I have heard and read messages that were sent my way, don't agree with that uh, distillery being uh, built there. Uh, but at this point, I think it's better if we find a way to work with the distillery. How can this distillery benefit the Glen Gardens community? Maybe it may be through a foundation or some sort of endowment that the distillery could provide, you know, but how can we move forward in working together although we disagree? I agree, that's a tough vote, and, but it's just an example of many tough votes. But, you know, education is a big piece that people have, not just your school education, but talking to each other and learning about yes. each other. So how do you think citizens, any one of you, can get involved at this point and what can they expect and how can we touch them and raise their awareness? I think one of the things we're doing, and just to touch on uh, Charles's uh, point, I would hope in 10 years they don't need us. I would hope in 10 years that each community, each neighborhood says, you know what, we're inspired, let us have a uh, compassionate uh, neighborhood and we can do things not only for our neighborhood but for our neighboring neighborhood and that is through inspiring people. I think one of the ways we can get involved in this another program we're doing is we are having a communal garden. Uh, the communal garden happens to be in my congregation but we're having beds from the uh, compassionate Fort Worth where anyone who can come out and wants to learn some gardening skills we will offer at the compassionate Fort Worth through the synagogue will offer classes for them. Because not everyone is as blessed as we are to have food on our table. Mm -hmm. And to be able to grow some of their own, I think would be a huge uh, help to those families. And not only that, there are some people who don't have food and we as a, a group are planning on donating our produce to them. So to give everyone the dignity of being able to have a good meal, the dignity of being able to provide for others, I think is one way we can do this. And we're asking for volunteers to come till the garden. And it doesn't have to be someone from in our community or from in our committee. Someone just needs to call one of us or get in touch with us and say, you know what, I'd like to learn and we'll be happy to help them do that. And I think that's way we can be compassionate and to feed people in need as well as teach them a skill for their own benefit and for the benefit of their communities. And community gardens are a growing trend Absolutely. across the nation and start with yours and maybe we'll teach them and expand them out into Absolutely. some of our vacant lots in the city mm -hmm. and put in more community gardens, Absolutely. which would be great. Yes. And we have to engage businesses to yes. be part of this compassionate effort. Yes, yes, and and, they're, and here in downtown where, where my congregation is located, our building is located, we're interacting with, with professionals all the time. And one of the things that I know a lot of, a lot of businesses, a lot of professionals are looking for are just opportunities uh, for someone to say, here's an opportunity for you to be involved and for you to engage because they want to, they really do. And that's a big part of what Compassionate Fort Worth is about, is about providing the avenues, providing the roads for various people to walk down. And, and but ultimately it's about helping us all to come to this common understanding that we're all God's children and, and when one person hurts, we all hurt. And the truth is there are a lot of hurting people. And if we can just help one person at a time, I have a little saying in my congregation, we do for one what we wish we could do for all. 
But as we keep doing that, as we keep do, doing for one what we wish we could do for all, we're making a difference. And, and this city uh, is becoming and will become uh, a more compassionate city. That's, uh, we, we say our, our, our little motto is we are building bridges for a more compassionate Fort Worth. And that's it. We're, we're looking for a way to build another bridge, build another bridge, build another bridge so that this city can come together and that we'll be marked by that term compassion. Great. It's a great way to do it. What's next for Compassionate Fort Worth? Well, we have two of the uh, programs we mentioned. Or one is the uh, garden. Hi. One is the, uh, the tax uh, program. We're also planning on having the Martin Luther King uh, Day of Service. Well, I'm sure Charles will explain a little bit more about that. And we're planning on having a main uh, faith-based event, which is open to say, yes, there are differences, but we're all united in our humanity. And that is the big event we're going to have in order to show everyone that doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, or what you believe, you're accepted, we're compassionate towards you, and we want to g grow together. But Charles, I think, can explain more about the MLK Day. Well, January 19th, uh, we're partnering with uh, the Meals on Wheels and Neighbor for Neighbor. Uh, initiatives to uh, to launch this. Uh, I, I think it's been going on for a while, but to participate with uh, the Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Day of Service, uh, and that'll take place, uh, like I said, January the 19th at Broadway Baptist Church. And so we're looking forward to, to that. Uh, we're also on, on Facebook, so uh, for those of us who want to connect with us, uh, they can connect. Uh, with Compassionate Fort Worth uh, on Facebook, so. Exactly, and, and we list, list our, our upcoming events and activities on there, and uh, that MLK Day of Service, looking forward to that. In fact, Mayor, I know you're going to be speaking at the lunch in that day, and so that's, but, but that's just one of the, the events where there's need for more volunteers. And, and right now, as we're, as we're initiating this, this movement, we are looking for, for uh, for efforts that are already organized to some degree, but there's great need for volunteers, that, that primary resource, which is people. And, and what we are doing is we're able to pull those people together and, and bring them from all parts of the community, all parts of the county, and, and serve together, learn from one another, serve with one another, um, therefore making this a more compassionate city. And many people are willing to donate their time to volunteer. They just don't have time to set up an organization or to get involved in the hierarchy in it. So having a group that's already there that can identify needs, you could go and give an hour or you could give several hours. Yes. Isn't that the idea that they can come and do whatever? Absolutely. Louisville, Kentucky had better than 100,000 people participate in their day of random acts of giving. I'd love to see Fort Worth have that many people at some point. I'd love for us to top Louisville. Yeah. I'd love for us to beat Louisville. That's right. We can issue that challenge to Mayor Fisher and say, we're going to beat you. Well, thank you all for joining me. My guests today are Andrew Bloom, Tim Woody, and Charles Robertson. Thank you for your hard work on this issue. Well, thank, thank you for your leadership. Thank you. As our stewardship group discussed, there are many areas in our lives and in our city where we can and must express more tolerance and understanding. Friends, I hope you'll join me and this great group of compassionate Fort Worth stewardship in showing more compassion in your everyday thoughts, action, and behaviors. In doing so, we can foster a community built on respect and equity. We can alleviate the suffering of many citizens and we can create a strong and unified Fort Worth. For more information on compassionate Fort Worth, visit fortworthtexas.gov. Thanks for watching today. It's a pleasure being with you. I'm Mayor Price, and today I'm reminding you it's not just your Fort Worth, it's your compassionate Fort Worth. Well, folks, as the holidays draw near, so does the end of the year. It's been a fantastic, inspiring, and productive year at City Hall. I'm proud to have been a part of so many exciting initiatives. Some of what we've accomplished include the arena vote, thank you everybody, Fit Worth, Blue Zones, Steer Fort Worth, a year of technology, customer service, and fiscal accountability. But 2014 isn't over yet. We've still got some great events in Fort Worth and a calendar that's so full you don't want to miss a single thing. Christmas in the Stockyards is Saturday, December the 6th from 12 to 5. Congregation of Os Shalom's menorah lighting is December the 20th. 
you can look on their website and find out the time. And if you're looking for a special way to give back this holiday season, check out these organizations for volunteer and donation opportunities. Cowboy Santas, they provide toys for children to low-income families during the holiday season. Tarrant Area Food Bank, you already know them. They're a great resource for people in need of food. Empowering our community by providing that food and resources to individuals and family. And of course, United Way is just beginning to wrap up their campaign. It's a local organization that will point you in any number of directions, including to Compassionate Fort Worth to help make a lasting difference in our community. Have a great holiday season. I look forward to seeing you soon.